case. I'd like to get right to the most important point with my next guest, which is Representative Lee Zeldin of New York's 1st District. Uh, Representative Zeldin, uh, since the last time we talked, it looks like, am I correct in saying you've been promoted to lieutenant colonel in the United States Army Reserve? I have, yeah. No, it's uh, a true honor to continue to, to serve. My background has been more military than it has been serving in Congress. And uh, it's one of the best ways to stay grounded. Family does a great job in keeping you grounded. Constituents can keep you grounded. Uh, but serving in the military is something that I, I love, and I don't plan on giving it up anytime soon. Well, I had a, I had a great 27-year career. I, uh, of all the ranks I held, and I was a PFC, and I, I, I went all the way up to 06, uh, I, I love being a lieutenant colonel the most because I, 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 you could still be with soldiers. You could still be leading at the battalion level where people recognized you and you walked into it. And, and when you walked in a room with, you know, when you walk in a room with an eagle, people freak out. You walk in a room with a black oak leaf, people are like, okay, I can still talk to this guy. So I got to tell you, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm a little bit jealous. Uh, and I've got a question for you. You start your uh, military career as a military intelligence officer. Let's just put the, uh, you know, Let's, let's put the jokes about that one aside. You understand about uh, counterintelligence and uh, spy threats. And, you know, in the House of Representatives right now, we've got Eric Swalwell, the pungent rep representative from California, and he fell into a honey trap, and he's still on the House Select Intelligence Committee. How did that happen? Well, that, that's filled with questions that people are asking in search of answers and the first attempt that you'll see the first round of answers that that are going to come from house democrats are going to be an attempt to dodge to get past the story hope it goes away and you move on uh, to other stuff i don't see that happening here and uh, the questions have followed you, you almost are starting to see that second wave of questions to speaker pelosi for example and uh, what you start finding if you're, say, communications director for the Speaker of the House, you say, hey, listen, Madam Speaker, this isn't going to work. We're going to have to actually answer the question. Every single member of Congress is a target for foreign countries. And especially if you serve on the House Intelligence Committee, you are a, a prime target because of your expanded access to some of our government's biggest secrets. So this is this is a serious issue beyond uh, you know, just uh, a, a day's news cycle of something to talk about. Well, you know, Representative Lee Zeldin, I, I'm just, you know, look, Eric Swalwell ran for president uh, uh, unsuccessfully. I think he did even worse than a noted furry Beto. And, you know, I. I, I got to say, he, he's he's the kind of guy who's dumb enough to think this Beijing bimbo was after him for his mind and his achievements. How do we how do we get the Democrats to take the threat of China seriously? Because obviously guys like Swalwell aren't and Nancy Pelosi isn't. You know, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I think on multiple levels, they're compromised as it relates to China. One is you have the historical status quo way of thinking. So some are just ingrained in continuing to think the way that they've always think, they've always thought for years or decades of their service. So that's one issue. Two is you see individuals who get compromised. Uh, you know, Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, the Biden family, uh, you, you start to make business dealing decisions and you get compromised at, at that next level. And then third is they, they see it, you know, well, we're just going through and, and coming off of a, a rough experience for our country as it relates to coronavirus. I mean, that started in China. And when you have this desire to resist, oppose, impeach, and obstruct President Trump and anyone associated with him with regards to everything and anything, you start to provide cover to China because you're afraid that if you go after China, then somehow you can't blame President Trump for coronavirus as much as you want to. So that third piece is the political calculation where Democrats see it to their advantage to provide cover. So on multiple levels, they're compromised. 
Now, Nancy Pelosi has got some some pretty tough problems. We won a lot of elections uh, in the House of Representatives, uh, and, and, and some new. Are, are we still counting some of those New York elections? Because you have. The, the New York 22 race, Anthony Brindisi, the freshman incumbent congressman running against Claudia Tenney, who was the congresswoman uh, up until the end of 2018. So they had a rematch in 2020. That race, the most recent count, had Claudia Tenney up 12. However, the judge last week ordered all the counties to count again. That race might not be over anytime soon. We'll see. There might be an update at some point this week. But everything else is pretty much settled. Uh, Iowa's second district uh, has a race where the Republican won the district by six votes. The House Democrat is pleading her case to the Speaker of the House to try to get the Speaker to seat the Democrat, even though the Democrat lost by six votes. Well, I, you know, uh, Representative Lee Zeldin, I was informed that we must follow the will of the people and we can never challenge a disputed election. I, 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 I must confess, I'm a little I'm a little confused about what the rules are. But uh, I, I do know this. Even if Nancy Pelosi manages to steal these two remaining elections, she's in a tough position, isn't she? She's kind of precarious with only a very, very narrow majority. You actually have more House Democrats who have publicly opposed Nancy Pelosi in the past, who have voted against her in the past, than you have a margin of error for the Speaker in getting 218 votes. There are so many different votes that the the Speaker cares about over the course of a a two-year congressional session, but there's only one vote that stands away far and above as mattering the most. That's the vote to be speaker. She needs to get a majority on the House floor, and she can't afford to lose this entire group of people who publicly oppose her. This is what I say about Nancy Pelosi and this vote that's coming up uh, at the beginning of January is, I'm not a fan of Nancy Pelosi. I'm highly critical of her. I believe that she should not be the Speaker of the House. I, I strongly oppose her on so much. If she can figure out how to put the votes together to become Speaker at the beginning of January, I'm going to be impressed because as of right now, the math isn't adding up, but she hasn't given up, and she's actually putting out uh, a lot of confidence. She, she believes strongly that she's going to get there. We'll see. Well, Representative Lee Zeldin, uh, there are a lot of uh, Democrats who – pretended to be more conservative than they were. And one of the one of the ways they did, Connor Lamb, for instance, was I promise not to vote for Nancy Pelosi for speaker. And then they get a pass. This time there's just no room for that. Uh, doesn't isn't this one more factor that's adding up to making uh, 2022 uh, a real tough year for the Democrats? A hundred percent. That's a great point. And what we saw in the impeachment push and with some other votes is that Again, where Nancy Pelosi views the vote for Speaker being the most important vote, some of these other decisions that are made where she factors in as part of her calculation to be Speaker, for example, allowing impeachment to go through, is that you end up sacrificing away members. I don't believe that, for example, Max Rose's vote in favor of impeachment helped him in his race against Nicole Maliotakis, who won and is now the, the congresswoman-elect in a district that supports Donald Trump. And you still have these House Democrats in districts that Donald Trump won, and you're sacrificing, a, sacrif- willing to sacrifice away members each time these decisions are reached because what's most important is that you want to be the Speaker of the House. The House Democrats, if they wanted to give themselves the best shot in 2021 and 2022, they will get rid of her. But Excellent idea, Representative Lee Zeldin. I'm Kurt Schlichter, guest host for the Hugh Hewitt Radio Program. We'll be right back. Stick around.